Hi Grace, this is Pastor Keith coming to you with an, another devotional. Hope this is a blessing to you. We'll be reading from Psalms 57, 1 through 6. And I hope that you will join us um, for worship this coming week at, um, at 10.30. Hope to hear from you soon. Um, so let us read God's word. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me. For in you my soul takes refuge. I will take refuge in the shadows of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out, God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebukes those who, who hotly pursue me. God sends me love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions. I lie among ravenous beasts, men who, whose teeth are spears and arrows and whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I have bowed down to, in distress. They dig a pit in my path, but they have fallen into themselves. Elizabeth Elliot lost her first husband, Jim Elliot, when he and four other men were martyred as they tried to take the gospel to the hostile Akua tribe. She lost her second husband, Addison Litch, to cancer. In an address to the Urban Missions Conference in 1976, she told of being in Wales, a watching a, a shepherd and his dog. The dog would herd the sheep up a ramp and into the tank of antiseptic in which they had to be bathed to, to protect from um, themselves from parasites. As soon as they would come up out of the tank, the shepherd would grab the rams by the horns and fling them back into the tank and hold them under the antiseptic for more for more seconds. Mrs. El Mrs. Elliot asked the shepherd's wife if the sheep understood what was happening. They haven't a clue, she said. Mrs. Elliot said, I've had some experience in my life that I have made me feel very sympathetic to those poor rams. I could figure out any reason for the, for the treatment I was getting from the shepherd I trusted, and he didn't give a hint of an explanation. If you've been a Christian very long, you've been there. You found yourself in over your head. These circumstances seemed overwhelming. And that's what it was like for David, the author of this psalm, David is surrounded by, by danger. He says in verse 4, I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among the ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. It's like David is standing right in the middle of these untamed animals. David cries for help. Look at verse 1 and 2. Have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadows of your wings until a disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. But, but then the strangest thing happens. Just when he's crying out, David switches gears. Look at verse 5. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Who does that? Someone who understands God and his purpose as a servant to the Most High King. Believers are just that. Believers in, the, in all the Lord has revealed to us above himself. We are called to serve rather than be served. I am a believer that many of us bow to the idols of self. We must please our sinful nature. When we do that, we buy the lie that God works to please me. If I do everything right, right, my reward will be a new car, a life without pain or sorrow. Advertisers are constantly trying to appeal to our ego. That part that says, make everyone believe you are successful, even if you can't afford the payments. You see, not long ago, a nameless friend had, brought, had bought this lie. He was set to buy the biggest truck he could with all the bells and whistles. 
He couldn't afford it, but he was going to make it work for him. As a result of this, of this hunger for attention, he took his truck, or he took this truck on an extended test drive, which he paid the dealer 300 plus a week. He did get the dealership gas car to fill, fill up the gas tank. He was also willing to spend huge payments for 12 years to own this truck. The idol of self had its grips on him tightly. He reluctantly realized that, that his life will change a lot in the next 12 years and he best move on and not pur purchase the truck. Deeper than disaster, danger, and distress is the desire for God to be glorified, not for our egos to be fed. If God's glory can be accomplished by saving us from our circumstances remaining unchanged while we continue to show confidence in God before the watching world, praise God as well. Either way, God fulfills his purpose for you as you delight and to honor him. Let us pray. Father, your son taught us how to pray. Hallowed be thy name. Before, give us this day our daily bread. Help me to pray, not you've got to do this, Lord, but be glorified in my life. This is hard at first, then it's freedom itself. Lord, may you continue to work in our lives, continue to reveal yourself in and through us. Help us to fight against our own egos, our sinful nature that so wants to bring attention to ourselves. So Lord, may you be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Till next time.